My name is Zahariel Zach Lettercast, and this is a clone of my voice before HRT. Here's what I looked like before going on testosterone. I was anorexic, in constant pain, and dysphoric to the point of making attempts on my own life. I was told often how beautiful I was. I made a career off of it. There were obviously fleeting moments of happiness, laughter, and laughing despite the depression and anxiety. But on the whole, I, I was far from happy. I was good at putting up a facade because of how I grew up, because that kind of behavior was necessary to survive. There are people who interacted with me before my transition who still don't believe just how much I was struggling back then. In addition to the dysphoria, I suffered the crippling effects of severe endometriosis. I was in constant pain, both physically and emotionally, and I wanted to die. I decided to pursue a medical transition in 2019 in order to save my own life, even though I knew it would destroy my career, which was based on my petite femme looks and small soft voice. My name is Zahariel, Zach, Lettercast, and this is my voice after being on T for four years. Voices, faces, and bodies change subtly over time on HRT, but the changes are often life-saving for those who need and can access it. Dysphoria impacts every aspect of a dysphoric transgender person's life, though I attempted to start my social transition in 2014 and actively pursued it in 2017. I did not start my medical transition until 2019. I started testosterone in November of 2019, and right off the bat, the changes began to ease my struggle. The next step was a hysterectomy, which was deemed medically necessary, but also served to further my medical transition. The surgery was initially only supposed to be three hours, but ended up taking around six due to the extensive scarring and pelvic adhesions that were a result of one decade of raging and ultimately life-threatening endometriosis. I awoke in November of 2020 from this major surgery in less pain than I had been since I was 14. November of 2021 brought my top surgery procedure. Technically, this procedure occurred on October 27th, but I lumped the anniversary into the other November anniversaries. I spent November of 2021 in the most painful surgery recovery of my life. I would go through it again if I had to, because it was the final piece to feeling comfortable in my own skin. Prior to my top surgery, I was binding my chest nearly 24 seven. I have damaged my ribs and my lungs as a result of this practice, but in the moment, it was better than having to deal with the alternative. Nowadays, I am working on helping my chest and back recover from binding for so long. The hardest thing is running, because I am still learning how to breathe properly. It's now 2023, and I've been living comfortably in my body for two years. Why would I show you images of how I looked before, or share examples of how I sounded before? What do I stand to gain from showing you all of this when it stressed me out so tremendously before my transition? I'm sharing this very summarized version of my journey with you for a few reasons. First off, I want to share just how important gender-affirming care is. I would not be here without it. If you haven't dealt with dysphoria, you can't know just how much it impacts the lives of the people who live with it every day. Second, I want to point out that transgender individuals don't transition for looks. I would often receive comments like, why would you want to transition? You're so pretty. I was cautioned that I was destroying my brand and that transitioning would ruin my chances at making it big in my career field. I was also told that I would not be able to find love if I transitioned. I was told that I should just be grateful for my looks. None of these are helpful things to say to a person who is considering transitioning. In fact, you may end up making them feel trapped in their situation and contribute even further to their depression and anxiety, or even push them further toward checking out of life forever. Pretty or not, career or not, my dysphoria had taken over my life. Which brings me to my third point. Obviously, I pursued my medical transition and saved my life. But I did lose my career and spent a ton of money on the process. For many, these and more are the costs of transitioning. However, I landed on my feet because I was not being consumed by my dysphoria, anxiety, and depression all day every day. This freed me up to pursue a degree and a job in a new, more mainstream, more stable career field. It freed me up to foster relationships with people who love and care for me. It freed me up to get to know myself. It freed me up to address other issues in therapy beyond just trying to survive. It freed me up to get married and be a parent. 
Which brings me to my final point. There are probably transgender people watching this video. Some of you have already transitioned. Some of you don't want to transition, which is a totally valid expression of your transness. Some of you haven't transitioned yet, but plan to. Some of you are in the middle of the hardest parts. I want to talk specifically to those who want to transition, or are in the middle of the hardest parts. It gets easier. It gets better. There's a lot of work that comes with transitioning. There is a lot of unlearning that has to be done. A lot of trauma that has to be worked through. Be patient with yourself. It's going to be difficult. My point here is that it is just so vital for you to know that you do have a future. Before my transition, I could not actually see or plan for a future for myself. I felt constantly lost and caught up in the moment, unable to do anything besides react. I couldn't plan. I couldn't think. I could pretend. I could talk. But in the end, it was all just a failing attempt to keep myself from drowning in my own despair. Now, I see myself living for a long time. And I want it. I am so happy to be alive, and so excited to see where life takes me. Obviously, I do not speak for all transgender people. My experience is just that. My own. It's not indicative of all, or even most, transgender people's experiences. This video is specifically for those who can relate, and for those who are curious about why someone might choose to pursue a medical transition. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whether you're transgender or not, I hope you're able to live in the body that feels right for you. Thanks so much for watching. Consider checking out some of my other content, which you can find at any of these links.